before we, that's it. Before we have to close, I, I just I really wanted you to just give a quick critique of Peter Kingsley's Catafalk and because it seems like it's a book that's made a lot of waves and is popular, especially am among people who do, who have actually never read Jung or any of the classical Jungians. And then that book sets itself up as like this new, this like this is the real Jung that you're getting from Kingsley. And it's sort of preposterous, in, in my opinion, as someone who's, you know, been reading Jung my, my whole life. And I just I think he I just not seeing what what the uh, what his point is, really. And you had a good some good writings on that. Do you think you could uh, summarize some of that real, real briefly? Well, in a sense, I would apply Hillman, who he um, what is a polite way of saying it, uh, who he disses on um, in from the very beginning of Catafalque um, and uh, Gig Gigerich. So I would say lots of what he says, criticizing the Orthodox Jungians is exactly what um, Hillman and um, uh, Gigerich uh, say in The Logical Life of the Soul. Um, I'm uh, up uh, the soul's logical life. I'm up to the chapter where um, he's uh, gone through the idea that we have to find the concepts that are implicit in Jung. He's gone through some of the orientations that you can find in Jung's works, including memories, dreams, and reflections. And now he's going a chapter to the errors of the orthodox Jungians. And um, he says lots of the same criticisms that um, uh, uh, Kingsley says. And he even takes some of the same um, uh, chapters um, or, or quotations um, uh, that Kingsley uses to what he thinks are a great effect. Which, so is, he takes, which is wild because all he does is Kingsley rips on his predecessors in a really uncharitable way as though there was no well, one other than him that understood Jung. And that, because and of that, his amazing you know, experience with the goddess. So yeah. <laughs> um, uh, maybe he had uh, some amazing uh, experience. Uh, maybe he did go and incubate um, uh, somewhere. I, I I watched a couple of films. I bought a couple of his films because to to listen to him talk, you have to pay. Um, where he talks about um, a dream where he is on a, a mountain. And have you have you seen this this one? He he was in a, he started doing a Jungian analysis, and he was on a mountain with all sorts of strange, complicated hieroglyphics, and there were people um, all over the mountain working on it, doing minutious re. Uh, research um, going higher and higher, and the analyst supposedly said, get down off that mountain, come down to the ground, ground yourself, um, you're not supposed to be on that mountain, you're, you're a human being who walks on the earth, or something like that. And that sort of um, broke his energy, and he talked with some guy um, who's very, uh, who's written several books, who met Jung, who had a similar sort of dream, well, Wolfgang Pauli had a dream like that, too, that Jung interprets in psychology and alchemy. Wolfgang Pauli, the dream about the Rainbow Bridge. And yes. Pauli had to, Jung suggested he has to walk under the bridge because only the gods can walk, can walk on rainbows. And if you walk on well, the rainbow. Oh, I think that's a bad side of Jung. Um, <laughs> it seems, well, it depends. Who knows? But. Um, uh, it's comparable, though. I, I, the way I get comparable. it, it's yes. comparable to what you're saying about yeah, you, you have should to, get you off have that. To decide in, yeah. in each, um, each, uh, each context. Uh, context. context. But, yeah. Is it a neurosis fleeing from life, or is it some amazing um, spark of creativity? And yeah, if you think it's a neurosis, you'll bring them down. And right. if you think that there's something creative going on there, you'll encourage them to keep on the mountain or, or keep on the bridge. So what do you, do you think that he, Kingsley was being encouraged to come down from the the mountain, rainbow well, mountain? If you want to be really oh. nasty, he, <laughs> maybe he should have come down. Maybe he should have come down. His high oh. horse, his high mountain. Oh, his uh, nobody him likes that. Um, okay. uh, I remember the, the guy um, um, who was the head of the 
the new alchemist, the al alchemical Jungian analyst in France, in one of his books, um, he at least had some power of self-criticism. He um, uh, had a, uh, a patient who had a dream similar to that. I don't know, maybe he doesn't say what the dream is. And um, he, he brought him down to earth. And that night he dreamt that um, he uh, saw this guy in an incredibly beautiful symphony. And the music was just so incredibly creative and beautiful. And so the next time he saw him, he apologized for his interpretation and said, uh, that's the way you must go on. So you never know. Um, and you can become sort of systematically deflationist. Um, right, right, yeah. Where it's not right. But um, anyhow. Very different from Hillman's approach too with Dream. Hillman is just letting the image be a living thing, like an animal that yes. comes into the so room. So he would never say, come down to earth off the mountain. Yeah. Right. And I don't think Gigerich would. Gigerich would say, ah, yes, at last you're getting to the concept. Um, yeah. That's the way to go. So uh, his complaint, Kingsley's complaint about Jungian analysis is justified, but it's, it's selection bias. He's taking uh, sort of bad or not on the ball uh, analysts and he's generalizing that, and he thinks he's the only one who's seen through, through that. And he's um, doing it to always make himself seem like he's somehow superior. It's a very strange, there's something there that it's just really it's difficult slogging through his book. It just seemed like it's all about how there's only like a few people that really have kept this tradition of, of wisdom alive, going back to, you know, Empedocles and, and uh, Pythagoras and and um, and you know, like, in, and it's it's young and it's Kingsley Kingsley that that are the only ones that really know the truth of what the ancient Greeks uh, knew. You know, it's, it's that that's it, I mean that's almost literally like what he's saying. I mean, true. I don't true. know. Yeah. Um, and his way of doing it is Parmenides, not uh, Pythagoras. Sorry, Pedocles and. and uh, Parmenides, yes. Parmenides, yeah. But he doesn't talk about Heraclitus because... Very important point. Yeah, he doesn't talk too, about Heraclitus. Which too flowing, too yep. fluctuating, too liquid for him. Yes, right. And uh, I don't know, you've read more Gigerish than me, but I would have thought that Gigerish would like um, Anaxagoras because he puts um, mind as the supreme principle which makes one think of some forms of um, Zen Buddhism. And um, so uh, Gigerish would interpret everything that Catafal takes literally, including the dream about um, the end of humanity. Gigerish would take that as um, uh, metaphorical of um, passing to um, the spirit and the concept. So the ordinary idea, because there are no prophets for Gigerich. So Kingsley, well, maybe he's going too far, who knows? But Kingsley is certainly not a prophet. And so this, and Jung is, was not a prophet. Or yeah, but you get, the impression from, you get the impression from Kingsley, though, that Jung should be seen as a prophet. I mean, that's kind of how... Well, there I you are. He, he can't take uh, Jung uh, uh, metaphorically. So Jung's final dreams, that really makes it incredibly intense. It's his final dream.